Hi, today's good person to know is Vincent Sider. He's Vice President of Social Media at BBC Worldwide and he talks about how Catch Up TV and social media has changed the way we watch TV but also the way they deliver their content. Vincent says Catch Up TV and Video On Demand has increased the time people watch TV. In fact, people watch the equivalent of two months in a 12-month period. That's one-sixth of our life a year watching TV. Vincent says content is key, but not just any content. It's content that extends the story beyond the show because fans want to get involved and about finding creative ways to keep the fans engaged because that will determine how profitable they'll be in the future. So what are the BBC doing? Vincent says BBC will increase their investment in content by 30 million per year, create three more channels, secure their route to market through social media, and they use different platforms for different reasons and explains what they use and why they use them. Security is paramount and Vincent says that they have different tools and different policies to manage this. For example, third party involvement is vital. He says if activities don't fit within a set of five criteria, they just don't do it. Their criteria are awareness, traffic, connection, engagement and commerce. And they find interesting and creative ways to deliver on these criteria, for example, ride along with a stick. I hope you enjoy this video and that it gives you some ideas as to how you can use social media to engage with your audience so that you can be profitable in the future too. Thank you for watching. Catch Up TV was actually introduced in the UK by the BBC iPlayer in 2007. The change in, in, in behavior that this um, caused um, is not so much about the patterns about how people consume TV, because more or less, people wake up with radio, watch online TV all day long, and then there is a peak of, of consumption at about 8 to 10 um, on linear TV, and then the catch-up TV takes, takes over. We love video on demand. This market has just doubled in size uh, over the last uh, 12 months. Together, Catch Up TV and Video On Demand services, they just increase the amount of time that people spend watching TV. Overall, it's about two months over people's life every 12 months. This is a snapshot of activities on Twitter for Top Gear on Sunday the 2nd of February. About 60,000 tweets with a peak of 2,700 tweets per minute, which roughly translates into about uh, 81 million impressions. This is creating a new industry, an industry to measure the impact of social conversation on TV ratings, and vice versa. If you look at the, uh, the ratings of Breaking Bad, the finale in the US, it was the most tweeted show in the US, but it didn't even reach top 10 in terms of ratings. The correlation between social conversation and TV ratings is not clear yet. Well, Twitter is very good at telling us the volume of people that talk about a show. Facebook is trying to tell us what kind of people actually watch our shows. We believe that content is the key. But not just any content. Any co content will extend the story beyond the show. Because what we've learned over the last couple of years is that um, fan wants to get involved and, and it's how creative we are in engaging with them and keeping them engaged that will determine how profitable we are in the future. Specifically for the BBC Worldwide, we plan to grow our content investment by about 30 million um, to about 200 million pounds per annum. We will create few new brands. We will stick to our route to market by leveraging our assets like BBC.com. We are going to use social, and we are using social. In fact, we have about uh, 34 million likes on Facebook. Sorry, you think okay? About 5 million point six on Google, about 2.4 on Twitter. It's about 19 teams across the world operating in social. What that says is that social is now above the line marketing for us. We are leveraging uh, platforms in different ways. So Facebook is mostly our hub, right? In fact, Facebook tends to extend in all directions. It used to be an open graph, it's becoming an interest graph, it's going to mobile, it's going to be mobile chat. So it is a hub for social, and this is where we invest most of the time. We use Twitter for real-time interaction, of course. Uh, we use Google Plus as a way to improve our SEO. And we use Tumblr if we want to create a more intimate link with our audience, or if we want to target the younger audience. We are using Instagram more and more, but the, I would say the thinking there is not yet um, structured, but um, it's, it's, it's becoming our hub for mobile activity, of course. We use Pinterest if we want to engage about our consumer products. We are not yet using LINE 
in which I would have mentioned these two platforms because they are important, especially in the Asian market. Line is now the dominant force in, in Japan. More and more, we are concerned about security. In 2013, an explosion of attacks from the Electronic Sail Army, on CNN, on Al Jazeera, on the BBC itself, BBC Weather. So we are refining our governance, which is a mix of different things, editorial policy, social media crisis management and escalation process. I could not emphasize enough how important it is to have a third party escalation process. Of course, we have moderation policy, commercial policy, UGC policies, third party guidelines, security standards, a number of, of, of governance assets to help us secure the way we operate. We have tools, of course, to support the governance. We have content workflow management tools, publishing tools like Hootsuite. We have moderation tools like Chris Pinking. And we have uh, brain moderation, uh, brain monitoring tools like Brainwash. Now that we are secure, we can focus on the key outcomes. Well, as far as we're concerned, it's about these five objectives. And if our activities don't fit within each of its each or one of its objectives, we just don't do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover each one of these objectives with some examples. The one is for the new Top Gear iPad magazine. So an exclusive video that you could only watch on the iPad magazine. Again, this is above the line. That post, in about three hours, was, was printed, was seen, by about 700,000 people. Traffic. We've been leveraging Facebook to send traffic to the top year websites for quite some time now. Last year, we've had about 100 million visitors, about 50 million units, and Facebook drove about 38% of that traffic. How do we connect? Well, we've grown this Facebook page uh, up to 13 million likes, is not any top gear content. It is tailored for this audience for the petrol head with attitude. So that maybe not new, they are maybe not um, they are new to the brand, they, they, but they are very image conscious, they, they are youthful, expressive, um, and this kind of content resonates very well. Um, and sometimes it's very it could be very simple. Every Friday we ask our audience, our fans, to tell us on Sunday how they spend their weekends in their car. The amount of UGC, the amount of user-generated content around our brands um, is just phenomenal. Just one example of people having fun with Hobby and Lego. So this has prompted the magazine team, Charlie Turner in that case, um, to create a Lego stick. Um, it was a limited edition, it was on sale I think for two days, out of stock. So Twitter had this uh, program called the Amplify program, which um, gives you tools to create innovation and to get sponsors to pay for that innovation. As you were watching the, the power lap on your TV, you could actually on your smartphone watch it from within the car. And then of course was the actual uh, tweet where we were inviting people to ride along with the stick, so you would see this on your smartphone as you were watching the car um, around the corner. And in fact, any, anyone can achieve the same results. Uh, there are platforms nowadays, one of them is called Snappy TV, that can help you, if you have a public feed of a, vi of a, of a broadcast, extract in real time the video that you want and then publish it on Twitter. What I've read the other day is that now they are about to build a new infrastructure based on the laser. They're going to use military infrastructure, laser, to actually uh, send information to other hubs to trade faster than the other guy. And it's the same kind of arm race competition in digital and in social, right? What we've done so far, we could have optimized tenfold by using big data platforms, not to mention them in social flow, for example and get a competitive advantage because at the end of the day uh, we used to follow about five brands in social we are now about to follow uh, about 50 brands about 5,000 uh, um, news feed elements every month right? it's, it's the way that we think, the way that we think it's how creative we are in engaging with our fans and keeping them engaged that will determine how profitable we are in the future so technology will not determine how profitable we are in the future the way we think the way we create that content, the way we immerse our fans into their, their passion will determine how profitable we are in the future. And that's the way we operate uh, at BBC.